Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Anytime you are watching this video, I say good day to you. The Lord gave me a message for you to make you value what he did for you thousands of years ago. And I tied to this message celebrating the celebrant because I've noticed that many of us Christians will celebrate the guest than the celebrant. And now God have directed me towards you to make you know that you must celebrate the celebrant whose name is Jesus Christ. Like I always say, I've said this thing off too many times. If I happen to be celebrating my birthday and I've invited a musician, according to the African culture, not even on the African, many, uh, many national in the world used to hire a musician to come and play for them whenever they are having an occasion. And if I've invited you as a, a, a guest musician to come and play for me, and you are not mentioning my name. That's what usually happens in Africa when a, a musician is playing at an occasion. They mention the name of the celebrant. But if you are mentioning the name of my guest, then me that I've invited you, that I've paid for you, maybe I've given you 500 pounds or 500 euro out of a thousand euro. And you didn't mention my name. And after the event, you come to me to ask for your balance. I'm going to query you because I have invited you. You never mentioned me. You never even seen me at all. Where you are playing, I will query giving you the balance. And that's what many of us used to do today concerning Jesus Christ, the one who came at this very particular season of the year. Many of us preachers, we don't mention what he has come to do for us. And even many Church member, when you are preaching about Jesus Christ, he look bored to them. What they want to hear is about powerful prayer to conquer the enemies of their fathers out, the enemies of their mothers out, or powerful teachings about how they can prosper in life. Hallelujah. And uh, Apostle Paul saw this attitude in the church of Corinth. Uh, he, he wrote them this this description in in First Corinthians chapter one verse eighteen. First Corinthians chapter one verse eighteen is the Bible says, "For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God." Because Apostle Paul noticed this attitude. In the, in the church of Corinth and they wrote to this message to them. Because uh, what, what, makes the, 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 what makes the message of the cross to be a foolishness to those who are perishing? Number one, it was not appealing to their philosophy. Yeah. Uh, Apostle Paul saw this, that the message of the cross in the church of Corinth was not appealing to their philosophy, was not appealing to their wisdom, was not appealing to their intelligence. So they make mockery of the messages of the cross of Jesus Christ. And Paul told them, I am not sent to you to preach wisdom to you or to preach philosophy to you. I'm not sent to preach intelligence, but to preach Christ, the wisdom and the power of God. So that's the reason for this message. And I want you to listen attentively because it's going to bless your life. Amen and amen and amen. So this, this happened. In the church of Corinth, to the extent that even the church in Corinth, they were noticing their preacher because they have a lot of preacher among them. They have Apollos, they have Cavers, so they were trying to sign their message. Mm, this one's message is not appealing to our sense. It's only preaching about Jesus Christ. So, Apostle Paul said in First Corinthians one seventeen, "See, for Christ did not send me to." baptized, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom or eloquence, lest the cross of Christ be empty of its power. Because when we are listening to intelligence, it's good to preach intelligence messages, but if we don't mention the celebrant, we don't mention the name of Jesus, what he has come to do, we make the cross less of its power power 
And Paul also noticed this, that this has brought confusion in the church of Corinth. Yes, because he noticed that most of them, they were preferring one preacher to the other. Yeah, they were preferring. They said, oh, my apostle Apollos. The other one will say, I prefer Apostle Kepha. The other one will say, I prefer. They were, they were having preferences. Look at what he wrote again in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 11 to 13. Because Paul noticed this in the church of Corinth. And it's rampant all over the world now. When you see a preacher preaching about messages of salvation, people begin to sleep or teaching. People begin to sleep in the church because they are not hearing what they are here, want to hear. Listen to 1 Corinthians 1, 11 to 13. My brothers and my sister, some from Chloe's household have informed me that there are quarrels among you. Verse 12, what I mean is this. One of you says, I follow Paul. Another say, I follow Apollos. Another say, I follow Kava. Still, another say, I follow Christ. Like we follow people on YouTube today. They have been doing this also in the time of, of the, the beginning of the church era. And in verse 13, Paul asked them, is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Were you baptized in the name of Paul? And this is happening in our era also, whereby we see many Christians, they begin to uh, surf on the YouTube looking for a pastor that will appeal to their senses and neglecting the pastor, the message of the pastor God has given unto them. And the mistake we make today, can the pastor on YouTube or on Facebook feel your pain? Can they come to your house and visit you? No, no. It is your residence, Pastor, that God has given unto you. Paul saw all this mess in the church of Corinth and he began to address all this mess. I pray, I believe you will not find yourself in this type of shoe. So in verse 18 of 1 Corinthians 18, for the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who have been saved, it is the power of God. Praise the Lord God Almighty. So the message of, 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 of Christ's death and resurrection must have a room and a place in our churches and in the heart of every believer. When pastor is preaching about salvation, don't say this is all summer. Let me go and sit down. Many people, it's better I sit down at home and hear any powerful messages on, on, on TV. No, you must be in your church and respect the message of your pastor. Praise the Lord. We will examine the benefit of the death and the work of Christ on the cross. For a few minutes, we are going to examine the benefit of the death and the benefit of the work of Christ on the cross. And then we also examine the benefit of his resurrection. But for a few minutes, let me quickly talk to us about the benefit of the death and his work on the cross. Like I've told you, this is the best message Jesus wants you to hear at this very particular time. In Isaiah 53, verse 4 and verse 6, in King James Version, in KJV, Isaiah 53, verse 4 and verse 6. In the first line of verse 4, the Bible says, Surely he had bore our grief and carried our sorrow. I'm talking to you about the benefit of his death and the work of the cross. And in Isaiah 53, verse 4 and verse 6, in KJV, Surely he had bore our grief and carried our sorrow. And in verse 6, the last part of verse 6 says, And the Lord had laid on him the iniquity of us all. The Lord had laid on him the iniquities of us all. The Lord had laid on him the iniquities of us all. So the scriptures say, Jesus bore our grief and carried our sorrow. And God laid on him the iniquities of us all. Praise the Lord God Almighty. This is the benefit 
of the work of the death of Jesus and the work on the cross. Let me quickly tell you something about what I see. This scripture make us to see Jesus Christ becoming a pro our propitiation or our torment lamb. What do I mean? I will explain to you quickly within a few minutes. Praise God. In Israel, there is a day that they call the day of atonement. The day of atonement. In this day, the high priest will bring a goat, a live goat, and he will lay his two hands upon the live goat and begin to confess the sin of the whole Israel over this lamb. And after the conversion of the whole sin, and they release the goat into the wilderness in the care of a man. And the man will release the goat, the goat will move around, and I'm sure a ferocious animal will miss the goat and kill this goat, meaning the blood will have been shed. Praise God. And this continues then, every day, every year, every day, every year. And if this continues, it means each day, thousands of goats will be slaughtered. Thousands of blood of gold will be shed. Praise God. So for this reason, Jesus came and did it once. Instead of doing it every year or every time somebody sin. Let me bring it out for you in the scripture. In Leviticus chapter 16, verse 20 to 22 in NIV. Leviticus 16, 20 to 22. Let me read for you. The Bible says, When Aaron had finished making atonement for the most holy place, the tent of the meeting and the altar, he shall bring forward the live goat. He is to lay both hands on the head of the live goat and confess over it all the wickedness and rebellions of Israelite, all their sins, and put on the goat's head. He shall send the goat away into the wilderness and send the goat away in the, into the wilderness in the care of somebody appointed for this uh, purpose. And in verse 22, the goat will carry on itself all their sins to a remote place and the man shall release the goat into the wilderness. This is what we call day of atonement. And this is what Jesus Christ has come to do for us. Praise God. This thing made Jesus Christ to say the fourth statement on the cross. If you remember, there are several statements of Jesus on the cross. And the fourth one, he said, my father, my father, why have you forsaken me? That one is in Matthew 27, verse 45 to 46. Jesus shouted, say, my father, my father, why have you forsaken me? Because we for good three hours, while Jesus was on the cross, there was thick darkness. Many, God turned his eyes away from his son. That season was the most difficult and the most painful work of Jesus Christ on earth. The day God took away his eyes from his son, it was painful for him because it has never happened before. And what made this one to happen was because Jesus carried our sin. He carry our sorrow over his head, and God couldn't look at his son, and God turned away his eyes away from his son, and Jesus shouted. So Jesus became our propitiation lamb, our our our, our sacrificial lamb. He became our torment lamb. Instead of everyone buying gold every time we sin, Jesus Christ did this on once and for all. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And this is the work God has come to do for you. The high priest do this on once a year or quarterly when anybody has sinned. But now we don't need to do this again. That's why it is written in Hebrews chapter 9 verse 24 to 28. For Christ did not enter a sanctuary made with woman and that, that was only a copy of the true one. He entered heaven itself. Now, to appear for us in God's presence, nor did he enter heaven, verse 25, to offer himself again and again, the way the high priest entered the most holy place, play every year with the blood that is not his own, in verse 26. Otherwise, Christ would have had to suffer many times since the creation of the world, but he has appeared one for all. Uh, the culmination of the ages to do away with sin, but sacrifice himself. 
Verse 27 says, Just as people are destined to die once and after that to face judgment. Verse 28 says, So Christ was sacrificed once to take away the sin of many and we appear a second time, not to be our sin, but to bring salvation to those who are waiting for him. So Jesus appeared once instead of doing it every year. So we must give glory to Jesus Christ who came to become our scapegoat. Over him, the Bible says, he laid the iniquity of us all, according to verses of Isaiah 53. He bore our grief, according to verse 4. So Jesus need to be praised. He need to be glorified for this work he has come to do for you. If you are to be buying goat every time you sin, you know how much, how many goats you will have bought. But Jesus came and did the first ones. And glory to God Almighty. I pray for you in the name of Jehovah. The work of Jesus on the cross will not go in vain over your life. In Jesus' name. In the next episode, we'll be talking about the kind of sin that Jesus carried for us on his head. God bless you till I come your way again. Bye.